Debuting the 2019 AIA Pennsylvania Architectural Excellence and Special Awards. This celebration of architectural excellence throughout the Commonwealth is made possible by our generous sponsors and partners. Thank you to our preferred partners. Fenner and Essler, provider of insurance and risk management for architects and engineers. Milburn Macris, providing a wide range of legal services tailored to design professionals with offices in Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Offit Kerman, construction law experts specializing in solving professional practice and business challenges for architects and engineers. Office locations in Harrisburg, Philadelphia, and Plymouth Meeting. Summit Technology, AEC Cloud Computing and Technology Solutions. Providence Engineering provides design and analysis services to the building design and construction industry. Thank you to this evening's sponsors. Langen. Sheets. Burt Cromer Cremonies. John Canning Company. Jeros Balm and Bowls. Acoustic Distinctions. Earlier this fall, three esteemed jurors from across the country convened at the Cooper Union in New York City's East Village. The internationally renowned All Honors College, compromised of three schools specializing in architecture, art, and engineering, was the ideal backdrop for a full day of jurying the 137 project submissions. 2019's honorees exhibited distinguished design in the categories of architecture, historic preservation, interior architecture, regional and urban design, unbuilt projects, impact design, and the newest category for 2019, single-family residential design. Awards juries are really important. They, in some ways, validate what you do. There's nothing better than to have recognition from your peers. One of I think is very important to have uh, your work evaluated by your peers. Uh, I think is is important. People who know the discipline well and can evaluate what's working. And, and what's not working. The way that we look at our buildings and our projects very much is um, unique to who we are. So this is an opportunity here to show your best work, but to show your work in the best light. We're setting benchmarks for the profession and the discipline uh, through the awards programs. It raises the bar when you have a thoroughly vetted design jury, selecting awards, it raises the bar within the profession discipline of what is considered, you know, quality work. The people at the highest level really seek out the best in the profession and by getting the awards it really puts you at another level for, you know, the kinds of projects that you may be doing in the future. I think it's important that all architects have aspirations beyond the individual project, that we not only want to solve problems for our clients, but we want to set an example for our community as well. Tonight's celebration includes recognition of significant achievements by members, non-members, civic and government leaders, allied professionals, and member firms who contribute to the built environment and the advancement of the profession in the Commonwealth. The AIA Pennsylvania membership at large, nearly 3,000 members strong, is given the opportunity to nominate individuals or firms for these honors. A special task force of the AIA Pennsylvania Committee on Design deliberates on the nine awards and the board ultimately votes to either approve or amend the final slate of candidates. 2019's prestigious AIA Pennsylvania Architect Excellence Special Awards are brought to you by Langen Engineering. The 50-year Timeless Award recognizes a building that has endured the test of time and still resonates with the design community and the public. This year's honoree is the Philadelphia Savings Fund Society Building, 
current home of the Lowe's Philadelphia Hotel, located in the heart of Center City, Philadelphia. A National Historic Landmark designed by the architects William Lascaz and George Howe, the PSFS building is considered the first international-style skyscraper built in the United States. The conversion of the PSFS building from offices to the hotel was led by two Philadelphia-based architects. The conversion of the tower was led by project principal Arthur Jones of BLT Architects. Karen Deroff of Deroff Design spearheaded the interior architecture. The Philadelphia Savings Fund Society building, PSFS, was famous even before it opened to the public in the summer of 1932. That spring, it had been one of few American buildings to be featured in the Museum of Modern Art's Modern Architecture Exhibition, the show that literally defined the international style. The curators, Henry Russell Hitchcock and Philip Johnson, said that the PSFS building was the only big American building that deserved to be discussed in the same terms as the work of the leading European architects. PSFS basked in that international limelight for the next 50 years, while it shared the skyline of Philadelphia only with the statue of William Penn atop City Hall. Today, after being skillfully reconfigured by BLT architects as Lowe's Philadelphia Hotel, PSFS demonstrates that you don't have to be the tallest to be at the top of your game. The PSFS building is a marvelous group portrait of the latest architectural ideas and the most potent currents in American society during the time when it was designed and built, between 1926 and 32, when the Roaring Twenties roared and the stock market crashed. The client, PSFS President James Wilcox, was an erudite man who had written a proud history of his company. PSFS was America's first savings bank, an institution friendly to those with small means, which enabled them, among other things, to buy their own small homes. These were Philadelphia's signature row houses. But Wilcox was also a shrewd businessman, and under his leadership, PSFS became the largest financial institution in the city. This was the result of marketing, and architecture was part of that. In the mid-1920s, Wilcox hired the ultra-establishment architectural firm of Meller, Meggs & Howe to design lavish branch banks in the working-class neighborhoods of North, South, and West Philadelphia. Meller, Meggs & Howe were best known for simple-looking but gorgeously detailed suburban houses, which evoked the Cotswolds and Normandy, and their first PSFS branches were Italian Renaissance in style but the later ones dropped almost all historical detail and had electric floodlights to illuminate the stone-carved company name, an innovation that created quite a stir. More stirring was about to happen. In 1926, Wilcox asked the architects to design a new headquarters building amid the department stores on East Market Street, across from Reading Terminal. Their first proposal was for a kind of mechanico-electrical classicism with stone facing visibly bolted to the steel frame and an electricity lit globe on the top. It would have been a worthy competitor for the other Art Deco towers that were then rising in the city's skyline. However, before the skyscraper project progressed, George Howe had split with his partners Walter Meller and Arthur Meggs and taken the PSFS commission with him. He also took the design into the new world of architectural modernism, which he'd begun to learn about and which he would fully embrace by offering a partnership to the younger Swiss-trained architect William Lascaz in May 1929. Over the next six months, they developed the principal ideas of the final design. The identifiably modern things about PSFS are everywhere to be seen. First of all, it is a functionalist building, whose multiple functions are served on the inside and expressed on the outside. At the bottom, one starts with the green granite-clad podium with street-level shops and above them the majestic three-story banking hall with its corner-wrapping window where caring for one's savings is literally elevated above the bustle of everyday life. Then come three stories of bank offices and above them 25 floors of rental space which are jaw-droppingly cantilevered over Market Street. The office floors are served by a bank of elevators at the back of the building in the crossbar of the T-shaped plan. And the location of the elevators is represented in the brick pattern of the blank south facade. On top of the tower is a penthouse for the officers of the bank, which is like a lavish modernist villa with a dining room, 
meeting rooms, and a sun-drenched solarium. And finally comes the sign, angled to be visible to those entering the city on the new Delaware River Bridge, now the Benjamin Franklin Bridge, the longest suspension bridge in the world before Golden Gate. Also demonstrably modern is the building's technological exhibitionism. This is most thrillingly experienced in the huge escalator lobby, where clients are whisked up to transact their business in the banking hall, in which the impressive steel safe stands in the middle of the room, not hidden in the basement. There is also the look ma no hands panache with which the banking room, with its 63 foot clear span, seems to carry a skyscraper on its roof. Of course, that's thanks to a 16 and a half foot tall steel truss. The machinery needed to make PSFS the world's second air-conditioned skyscraper is more subtly revealed. It's hidden, in plain view, on the 20th floor, which has narrower windows and also inside the huge rooftop billboard. But PSFS is not just the product of functionalist and technical thinking. It is a brilliant modern design of geometry and color. Outside, this composition comprises the interlocking rectangles of the office slab in gray and black, riding atop the shiny green crescent of the podium and carrying the blue wedge of the sign on its roof. The banking hall on the inside is a similarly potent demonstration of abstract art. A pair of sinuous yellow marble clad balconies wind their way through its grid of black and white marble piers with dark red ceiling panels hovering above. In addition to all of this, PSFS is a showcase of modern decorative arts, full of fittings and furniture designed by its architects. Everywhere, there's polished brass and stainless steel and a virtual encyclopedia of the world's rare woods. The originality of this synthesis is notable. PSFS is not cribbed from a single European formula. Distinctively, it reflects how and Lascaze's understanding of Bauhaus functionalism, Dutch abstraction, and even in the glittering sweep of the podium, the energized language of expressionism. Importantly, PSFS isn't just an exercise in pure art either. When Howe and Lascaze initially proposed ribbon windows on all facades of the tower, accentuating the horizontal truth that the building was a stack of office floors, James Wilcox balked. He wanted a building that was not only functional and modern looking, he also wanted one that would look tall and claim a place in the public imagination. In other words, he wanted a strong advertisement. And so the vertical members of the steel skeleton were moved outside the skin of the east and west elevations, giving them a strong vertical accent. That these not always compatible ideas about functionality, technology, art, and advertising were pulled together with such virtuosity is remarkable. And remarkable is the most important thing for us Pennsylvanians to say about PSFS.